Hello community, let's do a real world example of DSPy and our task is easy. We're going to code, we have here a library with millions of books and we have a classification problem, an extreme multi-label classification problem because each table here on the floor is for one category. So now take a book, read the book, Try to understand what is the dominant topic label of this book and put it on the table. And you have 10,000 tables. Great. Task, table structure, clear. Another example. If you're looking for a new job in Europe, we have a European classification of skills, competences and occupation. For the 3,000 occupation, we have close to 14,000 defined skills. Now, if you ask me, hey, what is your profession? I say I have some AI knowledge. Well, this does not map at all to 14,000 official EU skills. So therefore, when I go here and I look for a job, you see, I sit down here at the HR department of a corporation and I'm asked here, so tell me about yourself. What are your skills? What are your competences? Have you worked before? And then she wants here, for example, that I refer you to the official European skill levels. Beautiful. Now, this is a problem for me because I will ask GPT-4 to do the job for me. And GPT-4 will decide, hey, this is really complicated because we have LLMs, we have VLMs, and we have robotic system. And he has more than 600 videos also on this. So my goodness, maybe I should go to Hugging Face. And there I find, okay, we have a transform architecture. We have some pre-training. We have some fine tuning. We have some ICL rack optimization. And we have some DPO alignment for specific large language models. And then you can go, for example, to a vector space. And you, over there you find, hey, if you know something about pre-training, maybe this person knows something about PyTorch, about TensorFlow, about JAX, or maybe C++. So you see, we have here an extreme amount of external data that GPT-4 needs in addition to its inherent knowledge to come up with what is AI today and which of the 14,000 skills are now integrated in today's AI knowledge. And you could do this here with LangChain manually, with prompt templates that are manually found. Or you say, hey, let's do this with a Python program, XMC Python program, with a DSPy self-improvement, self-configuration, and self-tuning language model, retriever model pipelines that automates the job. Let's do this. DSPy, beautiful publication in video number two available for you. Today we'll talk about in-context learning for extreme multi-label classification. I just showed you two real-world examples. They use here DSPy as a modular program to optimize here this for specific data sets. And they propose here a general program, the infer retrieve rank system. Let's have a look at this. Three steps. In our book example, so GPT-4 takes a book, reads the book, and comes up with some categorization, with some labels. Physics, theoretical physics, mathematical physics, biophysics. Great. Then GPT-4 decides, hey, I need more information. So it goes here to physics library, and it finds out all the detail about biophysics, about astrophysics how they are connected, if there are some categorization that span multiple dimensions here. And with this augmented data, we have now the possibility to have an extended understanding of those data. And now another language model or whatever, GPT-4 comes back and says, hey, I have now so many data sets. I do now a re-ranking and I find here the number one label for this book and for this book it is astrophysical whatever and puts it on a table right so three steps what is the easiest way to see this 
This infer retrieve rank method integrates in context learning, since we are operating with frozen language model, with a retrieval mechanism you know from retriever models like RAG, in a novel way. Step number one, a language model, chat GPT, processes the inbox, reads the book or any talks document, and generates a set of preliminary category guesses. This is based on the content and the context within the input. So the inference step leverages the language model existing knowledge, what GPT knows, and the understanding of the context to predict relevant categories, astrophysics, biophysics, whatever. Then, at the initial inference, a retrieval system is employed. The system maps the inferred terms to an actual label space, and this step involves searching through a database or a knowledge graph or a vector database to find more detailed specific information about the predicted categories from the first step. This retrieval process enhances the precision of the categorization by connecting the high-level prediction to more concrete, more defined categories. An example, people with PySpark knowledge also know how to code Scala. Yes, because both languages are from a company called Databricks, Scala was the original language and then they extended here PySpark applications. So, yes, beautiful. This I can find here in a knowledge graph, for example. And then we rank it, we re rank it. Final step involves re ranking the categories obtained by the retrieval step. And now, our most intelligent LLM, and now it's not ChatGPT, but now it's GPT 4 Turbo, is utilized here to evaluate the retrieved labels and organize them in an order of relevance or accuracy or whatever metric you have. And this step ensures that the most fitting categories are prioritized. So we have a clear winner, second, third. We have language models, we have retrieval systems, and we have a huge label space, a vast label space that is dynamic. And we have to have a high performance. And the authors found that their methodology is really suited for this task. So let's look at those three steps now a little bit more in detail. The same steps, just we take on some scientific goggles, some glasses and say, hey, so first step, we have a language model, then we have the contextual analysis, and this is the output. Yes, 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 you can read this retrieval step. We have the retrieval mechanism. We have the mapping to the label space. We have an enhanced precision. And then we have the re-ranking, then the new language model ranks here the retrieved labels based here on accuracy, and we have a final output generation. A little bit more in detail, please notice they have here two tasks, a biomedical task I'm going to ignore for the moment. And I will focus here on the job topic. If you want to find the job and your skill levels, here they use here a sentence transformer, an S-BIRD system for here the retrieval. Technical aspects are now a little bit more detailed. This framework, based on DSPy, is modular, allowing each step here in our chain, our graph structure, to be optimized separately. So this modularity and this automatization of the optimization provides a flexibility and adaptability to different data sets. We have a minimal training example and it is resource efficient because we do not have to fine tune the system. Remember, the language model is frozen and the retriever model is frozen. Implementation, we have in context learning, something beautiful that we know that language models have. The models generate prediction based on the concept provided in the prompt. No needing explicit retraining, anything else. And we have this beautiful option of bootstrapping for optimization, where we have a small set of label examples to bootstrap here the process and the synthetic data generation. And this is particularly true for the ICL tuning, the prompts that are used in the infer and the rank step. Hint, only in step one and step three, we have here this particular insight of in-context learning. In the retrieval step, we just have a retriever somewhere on the internet or somewhere on your 
corporate database that we here get over a similarity search, a cosine similarity in a vector space, additional data. But we have an in-context learning in the inferior state and an in-context learning in the re-rank state. What is unique? No need for extensive training. We have here this beautiful bootstrapping the process, bootstrapping here synthetic data. We have here the optimization of the prompts through a process of trial and error with some few short examples. Most effective prompts for the in fear and the rank steps one and three are automatically identified, and the system is optimized thanks to the authors of this paper. If you go a little bit deeper now in the code, you know, we have here modules, we have DSPy modules, when I showed you in video number two, we have the chain of sort, and we have to give them a signature. Chain of sort is a DSPy model, and a signature, those are the two important objects that we're going to have a look at, retrieve, you know, we just have an external database, for example. And then again, we have here a ranking signature, and we do again, here, this chain of sort, chain of sort. Hey, buddy. Okay, forget it. Module. I was to ask, hey, what is the simplest example you can think of? And please provide us this simplest example. So here we go. You have a book about solar energy and you want to classify here the book. You want to put this book on the table. On what table do you put it? Step one, infer. Now, Let's say ChatGPT gives us here three possible terms that this book is categorized. Renewable energy, green technology, or solar panels. This is what ChatGPT guesses. Beautiful. Step one, check. Step two, we need deeper insights. We need more actual knowledge. So for renewable energy, for the first term, we search a database and we get an output. And we get here information about different types of renewable energy sources besides solar, like wind or hydropower, their environmental impacts, how they work together in a complete sustainable development system. So we get a lot of additional information that we can evaluate and judge on. The same for green technology and the same for solar panels. Then we rank them. So we analyze here the augmented data, and we rank now the labels with a ranking algorithm. Beautiful. And then we have here the relevance assessment. And the question is now, this system, ChatGPT or GPT-4 says now, hey, I've read here all the details from the augmented data stream and I think the latest solar panel efficiency, this insight, this is more relevant than the general information in this book on renewable energy, for example. So what it does, GPT-4 decides now, based on the augmented knowledge, hey, the label solar panel, which was here, one, two, three, third place, is now the most important label, the classification, why this book is important. So GPT-4 says, hey, I would like to put this book on the desk in the library, on the table, solar panels. And then, number two, renewable energy, and third place goes to green technology. So we have here a extreme multi-label classification. Done. Easiest example I can think of. Okay. This is the result. This book, number one, solar panels. Nicest. We have a self-optimizing prompt engineering for an ICL rack system with a programmable explicit DSPI structure. So we have no prompt templates from LangChain and we have no LangGraph templates that we're going to use. But this is done by a compiler. And remember, with Taylor Prompt, I told you in video number two about DSPy, how we use this and how we optimize here the system. Now, on the complete other spectrum of my viewers, we look again at one, two, three now with a real detailed knowledge. And we try to be absolutely precise in our verbal description of these three tasks. Have a look at this. Enjoy it. What we end up is key insights of the infer retrieve rank methodology is that such a frozen retriever model can be made much more flexible if the language model learns 
in context via self-optimization DSPy, how to predict, and this is a model, this is the DSPy predict module, relevant queries, for the queries we have our signature defined, and interpret the retrieved results via a self-optimization of our language model to retriever model pipelines. So you have now a structured label space that you have the perfect classification example. If you want to understand these terms, video number two is here for you. Great. Of course, we have here from the authors here of this publication, of this archive preprint here, a beautiful GitHub repo. You find a complete code over there. There are just 113 stars. I think we can improve on this. So go there, maybe give them a star, have a look at this. It's really interesting. Oh yeah. Please note, I made a simplification. Because in the original paper, there's also a teacher LLM to student LLM configuration. For the simple reason they show, you have a teacher LLM like GPT-4 that can teach a student LLM like ChatGPT and old ChatGPT the same tricks and then the student LLM is cheaper to operate. So you do not have to pay GPT-4 for this, but you pay a cheaper model. Allow me to neglect this particular aspect of teacher-student LLM configuration because I wanted to give you the main idea and not optimize here for efficiency or cost efficiency. Just want to show you the, give you the understanding of what is happening here. And then you can not pay the most expensive LLM, but you can teach here a student LLM the same tricks. And this student LLM for this particular case is then able to handle all other tasks. Beautiful. Yes. There was a question of the video number two. And I showed you here also here the pseudo code. And there were questions, hey, this cannot be here the real Python code. And you're right. Because look, we have here the infer signature definition. And here we have the rank signature definition. So this is task one, task three. For the signature, you know, in the first one, give me a snippet from now medical article, identify here some particular task, like the adverse drug reaction affecting a patient, always return these reactions. Or you say, a snippet from a medical article, pick the 10 most applicable adverse reaction from the options that are directly expressed in the snippets. So here, it is easier. Here you have the same task, but you have options, let's say 100 different options. And from those 100 options, the LLM or whatever system, AI system you have, they choose now, they rank now here, rank signature, here the 10 top competitors. Beautiful. You have to look for the Python code, of course, and you go to the GitHub, and then you have the same infer signature. This is your DSPy signature object where you have a text field. This is, for example, here with the prefix vacancy, your vacancy notice, and then you have an output. And in the case of the infer, so step one, we just have an output field that says the skills. And as you have a list of comma separated official EU skills. Beautiful. And now you see this, this line here maybe is missing in the pseudo code. So yeah, of course, you have to fill it with data in the Python file. Yeah, so please always check. Try to understand here the pseudo code and then you go to the Python code for the explicit compilation. Of course, the same with the ranking signature of task number three. You have your DSPy signature object. You have again the same text, the vacancy. But now you have here this option because you have a set of options that you rank and then you come up with the top five or the top three or the top 10 ranked skill set. Again, very easy. You define here the input output if you want data format or yeah, function format. This is what you do here. You define what you want to have here. Let's see this in a file. So I go here to this GitHub. Now this is a pre-compiled results file here. 
never mind. You see here the text. And the text is again, perform code reviews for your teammate. So this is the task that is the description here for this particular job. And then for this particular text, code reviews, teammates, now you have, let's say, 100, 500 options. Team building, work in teams, build team spirit, lead a team, manage a team. Yeah, you get it. And then the system ranks this for your particular set. So you have here an output. And here you have 10, the top 10 skills ranked from here all the options. And of course, you have to have a rational in this chain of thought. What is here the rational, the logic, if you want, to choose this particular output? Now look at the rational. This is computer generated. GPT-4 says, hey, I have to identify the skills that are directly expressed in the job vacancy snippet. So if this particular vacancy mentions here, perform code reviews for your teammates, here we go with the text, which implies certain skills are necessary to fulfill this task, so I need to look for those skills that involve a working with others in a team, specifically in a team setting, and then for skills related to the technical aspect of performing code reviews. So for this text, for this snippet, we, no, not we, GPT-4 defined the rationale. And with this rationale, this is an additional information we can use now for our optimization of the DSPI the output is generated. So you see, just to give you a feeling what is going on behind this code segment. Again, simplest Python code here for all three. First, infer. Infer is of course a model. You have to use initialization methodology and then your forward pass. And here you use here this chain of thought as I showed you, beautiful. The retriever, you have no chain of sort argumentation, what we have in a retriever. You load or you create the embedding for all of your query terms that you are interested in. Then you find here the closest matches based on the semantic embedding similarity, which returns a list of the similarity score and the query tuple. And then for every label in this ontology, you get the maximum similarity. You notice this is simply if you want a cosine similarity optimization if you have your query vector, which are the three closest vector to your query vector. Beautiful. And then again in number three, the ranking, you have again this module, you have again the chain of sort, and yeah, supported signature. Please note, you have to officially declare the signature you want to use in your programs. So it has a, a specific file for signature, for supported signature that the system is able to operate on, but you have to declare them. So do not forget, in my first try, I forget to declare here a new signature. And the system told me, sorry, buddy, no way. So, okay, in the forward pass, you have here the chain of thought with the synthetic data augmentation. The nicest thing is here, this XMC program attains a state-of-the-art result on this job vacancy data set, but without fine-tuning, without prompt engineering, without manual prompts, without any prompt templates, just by using here for the teacher-student LLM configuration, 50 labeled examples. Now, if you have the money and you do not need here the cheaper student, but you go with the full teacher cost. It would be interesting to see how much you can reduce the other label example, but this is topic of another video. But I think it's great if you have close to 14,000 skills and you just have to give labeled example, so job description, this, and those are the 25 skills that go with this particular job description. 50, this can be done soon, fast, and then you have here the potential to do all 3,000 occupation and summarize here all 14,000 skill for a classification topic. Great. Again, Python code for infer retrieve rank. So for a complete three-step process, notice they are built up like Lego bricks. Lego bricks, this is this thing here. 
because you see they have here the infer retrieve. We will go back here is our infer retrieve class, and now you just build them down, you build up the complexity, and this is here the infer retrieve rank here the code. And if you go here for the pseudo code for the visualization of this code here in the official documentation, we have here the class infer retrieve rank, so identical. And you see here we have two signatures the infer signature, part one, the rank signature, part three. And on this signature, we just have our chain of sort DSPI model operating. The retriever, number two, has nothing of that. And then we predict with the language model, we pass the output, we use the output to retrieve the labels, and then we use the another language model to re-rank the labels. This is it. This is all that there is to do. The rest is compiler optimization with our specific yeah, teleprompters. Chain of sort. If you want to start here, in video number two, I went in detail through the chain of sort, what it does. Notice this is here the most important. You have an input and an output. This is in your signature. And then you move here, you generate syntactic additional data here with the inherent knowledge, let's say, of our GPT-4 system. You move to a data structure, input, rationale, and output. And I showed you just two minutes ago, what is the rationale for the outputs that we generate. But this here is syntactically generated rationale by GPT-4. Or your Mistral 7B, if it has been pre-trained and fine-tuned on a particular domain-specific knowledge, then if you have input and output of this domain knowledge, the rationale will fit. If you have this on an LLM that has been trained on, I don't know, how to bake a cake only, and you give it here, a, I don't know, theoretical physics input-output, the rationale will not fit. Watch out for domain-specific alignment, for coherent data structures. Great. Everything else about in video two. Yeah, talking about understanding, I have work to do. I have to have a deep dive in the coming weekends here because I still have to understand here exactly how the teleprompter work, exactly why we choose here, as I showed you the bootstrap with a few shot with a random search in video two. I have to have a deep dive here in this optimization. And I have to look at the code. And I need, I guess, multiple hours to do this. So I have here open questions, things to do for myself. Because I think this compiler, this can be a real intelligent thing. And maybe we achieve to make this compiler, if we imply the insight we have from graph theory, we can make this compiler really special but at first i have to understand the compiler from the authors and then maybe i dare to look in more detail about here the compiler but this would be the topic of another video for today i say hey thank you for watching thank you for listening and it would be great to see you in my next video